I can, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. Um, just probably start going through like the math ones. There's definitions, but I can do those. But. Okay. Yeah. Um, full disclosure, I, I helped another student today look at some of these and, and some of them, not this one, but there were a couple that were kind of problematic for me because I didn't know what the instructor meant or there was a mistake, but um, I will, uh, so, so the way this works now is I'm gonna go back and forth. Now I'm gonna share my screen and show you how to work through this problem uh, because there's no way to do it at the same time, at least the way we're doing it here. So this is a two prop Z test. So if you have a TI-8384 and you like using it and you know how to use it, you can you can actually just enter in this information in there uh, okay. into the two prop Z test. Alternatively, I can give you the formula for that. Um, what do you think would be the right, what do you think you would do on an exam if you saw this question again? Would you want um, to do it this way or? I just, whatever's easiest and quickest would probably be my route. The calculator if you got it, but uh, you've got to go to stat, I think. I'm gonna go, I, I can actually share that if I can get, get a moment to get that pulled up. All right, so let me grab, I'm gonna share this calculator. If you, uh, if you're seeing my screen, it's stat test, and then you want the two prop Z test right there, number six. Okay. And you can see it asks for X1, which is 180. X, uh, N1 is 500. Okay. And then uh, X, X2 is 150. And then N2 is 600. You don't care whether it's a P1 not equal to less than or greater than, um, and you just calculate. And so this gives you, actually, this gives you a ton of stuff that would be useful. Okay. Uh, so the Z value there is 3.96. Mm -hmm. And that's your answer for that. That's the test statistic. But you have to know that this is a two proportion. That's what prop is referring to, two proportion Z test. Okay. And a proportion test is always a Z test. Gotcha. That makes it a lot easier and quicker, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Gotcha. And I know this is a two test because there's the N1 and N2. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, when we did it, um, two prompts, you test. Okay. So X1 was like, so the X1 and X2 were just like the, num like the number of accidents. So. Yeah, they're, they're the number of accidents. They're like the, the parameter of interest, uh, yeah. like the, the ones that, that said yes or no to something. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Simple, easy. Um, okay. Um, I just screen share again. Yep, that would be great. It'll usually ask you, you know, to we'll stop sharing. Okay. Um, I guess question two, just because I don't really like understand quite what that all is. So P bar, P with the bar above it means mm -hmm. proportion. And proportions are always approximated by a Z or a normal distribution. So there's there's three answers that are wrong because they say T, T, and T. But, but the P bar means it's a it's a proportion. Okay, so that a normal distribution. Yes, normal distribution, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so just P bar has nothing to do with T distribution. That's right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um, point estimate is just the sample size. I subtract them, right? Or the mean. Uh, the difference between the means. Yeah, you're going to subtract the two means. So just 44.6. Yes. It's usually the first minus the second. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, is this, well, I guess not the same thing. The the null hypothesis is what it's asking about it. So what I'm seeing is a lot of the questions refer to the same sort of like prompt, and then you get a bunch of uh, you know follow-up questions to it. The null hypothesis is always an equality. So it's, it's got to be a, either a less than or equal to, an equal to, or greater than or equal to for the null. Okay. So the, the fourth option is out because it's, it's, it's the um, not equal to. Notice it says we are interested in determining if the accident proportions differ between the two age groups. So differ means a difference. It doesn't say greater than or less than. Whenever it says just different, that's an equal to uh, situation. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that's simple. Um, so yeah, that's simple because it would say greater than or less than right if it was asking for. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. Point estimate, same thing again, just this time you actually have to find the proportions though. So you have to- so um, You measure then, or divide the teenagers divided by the surveyed and then you subtract them? Yes. From both? Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, 384 divided by 800 for the first one and then 450 divided by 900 for the second one. And then you subtract. Okay. And I can show that if that is not clear. Very simple, gotcha. Okay. 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 Yes, this one I was doing earlier, and I remember that, like, yeah, I was confused on this one. Right. So this is a um, this is a two sample test because there's there's today and five years ago. They're giving you sigma squared. That means that the population is uh, is known. OK, um, that's what that Greek symbol means over there on the left. Now, I'm going to actually have to grab a snip of this and I'll share my calculator. You do have to find the test statistic and the, the p value that goes along with it to be able to answer this question. OK. All right. So rather than share my screen, I'm going to share that calculator again so that you can see um, what to do. So again, uh, you go to stat and then tests and the, the whole thing is like in which test it is. That's why I said there, there's two types. There's two sample Z and two sample T. Because sigma is known, use a two sample Z test. And you have a choice, your data or stats. You wanna choose stats when you're given the, the information uh, like, like you are here. So there, it's not in the same order. Um, do you, do you see that X bar one though is 82 in your, in your uh, screen there? Uh, yeah. You can see mine too, but do you see that I'm getting that? Now this is a bit of an oddity. It's, it, it gives you Sigma squared. So you can actually take the square root of it right here, the 112.5 and the calculator will do the calculation right here for you, okay. um, which is kind of important. N1 is 45. So do I, wait, okay, you said one, you said the 82, was that just general information? Or so did the, you put that in your calculator? Yes, somewhere? yeah, I, I'm hopefully you're seeing my screen. Oh, um, I see, okay, I see where you put it, my bad. Okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, on the same page. Okay. Okay, so now uh, we need to put in X bar two. I mean, you can put them, you just make sure you get the numbers in the right order. Uh, sigma one, again, you have to take the square root and uh, uh, 54 and then um, N2 is 36. 
Now, kind of important here is we got to figure this time we actually do need to figure out is it, a, is it a not equal to, is it a less than, is it greater than? Um, let's see what it's, we have to go back and read the, the question here. Um, so see how it says about the difference in the average? So the difference just means we don't care whether it's greater than or, or less than. So the not equal to is good enough. And we'll just calculate that. The P value is what you really care about. So see how the P is 0.0039? Mm -hmm. That P value is less than alpha. Your alpha is 0 0.05 in this problem. Okay. When, you're, when your P is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that they're, is that they are, are um, um, equal. So we would say that there is a statistically significant difference, letter B, between those. Okay. Because earlier when I was doing this one, I just was looking at it. So I was like, there's not, there's a difference, but it's not significant. But I see what's going on now. So then if we did reject it, would that be, there's no statistically significant like, what would that be then? I'm not sure the answer here is, is uh, and you are rejecting the only process. That, that's what this is. That there is, let me share the other screen. Okay, then I mean, I guess if I'm the opposite of what we're doing right now. I'm not sure that answer is here. Um, okay, that's all it might be A, it might be A because you, there obviously there is a difference, but it's just not significant. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And but I, I'd have to see. Yes. And we're directing because P is greater than alpha or less than? P is less than alpha and that's when you reject it. Like this needs to be like so clear before you go into an exam. This, this is like critical to doing well with all these questions about, about that. Okay, I'm writing that down. Gotcha, okay. Um, I'll screen share again. Um, okay, I guess seven, because I mean, we're here, so might as well. I just don't understand necessarily the concept behind all these like ones. Say, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Um, I just confused on definitions, but. Okay, so the, the only thing here that really matters is, uh, well, the observed and the predicted, that's a residual. The observed yeah. and predicted is a residual. That comes from regression. You're kind of doing that a lot here. Okay, so yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, um, these I was doing earlier too and kind of confused me. Okay, so uh, the, yeah, I'm gonna have to snip this one in. Gotcha. Let me grab that here. All right, so snip here. So I'm sharing, there it is, oh, it's so slow. Okay, uh, they give you an equation and they tell you um, apply between sales and advertising. Um, what I don't understand here is why, I don't understand and which variable is which. <sighs> Sales and advertising. Point estimate for sales. See, I don't know which is X and which is Y. I guess that, that's what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Um, D 
the, I mean, like, do, do you see why I'm struggling here? Because is, is, is sales the X and Y the advertising? I, that's what I literally, yeah. I'm okay. I mean, so let's just go with that for the moment. Then, then they're saying, well, the $10,000, but since it's in, in hundreds, it's actually a hundred for Y, but then that wouldn't make sense here. So let's just say it's X and then Y. Um, that would make X a hundred. Okay. Do you see that? Do you see that? Because yeah. it's still, so then you would say Y equals 500 plus four times a hundred. So that's 900. And then you say, oh, well, that's really in thousands. So it's 900,000 as your final answer okay. for that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, the, these, these show up, you, you might have seen it in like your business calculus course where they change the units. Just uh, you can see like, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what to tell you. Sometimes, sometimes you have to try it and see and see what uh, what works and what doesn't. Excuse me, because some of these are like pretty straightforward where it's just like you do like four times a thousand and that'll be your answer. But then they add in the advertising is $10,000 and that's where I get confused. Yeah, they, they really should have indicated which is the independent and which is the dependent, and that would have helped. I don't think this is a good question. I mean, are your exams like this, like this style on Canvas, or are they in person? They're in person on paper. Okay, hopefully they're they're a little bit clearer. Maybe you can always ask, you know, hey, what do you mean by she, this? She kind of throws everybody for a loop on the tests, but we'll figure it out. Um, All right, so whenever you're ready, go ahead and share your screen again, and we can uh, continue uh, looking at stuff. Okay, uh, this one. Okay, so the, uh, the value of R squared, it comes from something in this table. <laughs> isn't it? Um, I, like, isn't it like, I need to look up the formulas. Uh, we have a formula sheet that has R squared, if you can still see my screen. There it is that just SSR might divide yeah, there it is SSR over SST yeah so go back to your your uh so SSR is the 22765 number uh 22765 that oh, one okay. do you see do you see what I'm referring to 227 yeah. so and then you divide it by the, the the total which is 54721 okay and it's it's a number between you know zero and one, so don't don't uh, uh, if you get something weird, you know re recalculate it. Um, I get I get that last number on this zero point four one six zero three. Okay, yeah, Same and thing. and that's like because it's it's a formula on there. You know, like I just you know make sure you you know where you can find those values and why I use those values. Yeah for it super simple um okay yeah uh, so another this, question like this isn't this one just at a one dollar price it decreases at eight thousand in sales because when you used to a thousand times eight uh price is the variable x so it's it's a one it's always a one dollar in price, and then it is a decrease. Yeah, I guess it is eight thousand dollars in sales. Yeah, that that is right because it's uh, it's negative, so it has to be a decrease. Eight means in thousands because it's the y. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Um. Okay, 18. I was doing some of these earlier and just a good refresher on how to do it would be good. So again, there's probably another another um, 
formula for F from SSR and SSE. It's probably. I have it on our that formula sheet too. Yeah, let's let's go back and look at it if you can pull it up. Right, so. Oh yeah, so you actually need to compute a couple more values. Um, can you back to the other other one? All right, a sample size of twenty. Let me grab this question and I'll work through it. All right. Um, so the like there, when you get an ANOVA table, the so there's this degrees of freedom, and then there's this. S, S, R, and then there's this MS column. Well, or we'll call it SS column and then MS column. And then there's for regression and then error and then total. So right now, you know that SS of the regression is 3,500 and the error is 1,500, which means the total, which I don't even know if we need for the moment is right there. To get the MS value, you have to take the uh, this one right here, which... Um, hold on, sorry, I am still screen sharing. Oh, you're still. I'm so sorry, I forgot to share. That's that <laughs> yeah, another. I was just that is another. Sure. That is another problem with this is that I I forget. Okay, so all I did is I tried to organize the information that's given into this table. Okay. And then, the total degrees of freedom comes from the sample size. It's one less than the sample size. I need to quickly look to see. Uh, what goes in what position here. here. Um, I never do these by hand. Um, so that's why mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not very quick to be like, yeah, this is, this is the, where they go. I gotta, I gotta do a quick check here on a um, regression ANOVA table. Uh, so there's two variables here. So was that, does that make it two? Um, sorry, I'm just, uh, yeah, that looks like it looks right. So this is two and this is 17. Is that, that doesn't divide nicely though. So the MS number you get from dividing the SS by the degrees of freedom. That's, that's why it's so, that's why it's so important to get the right number here. Which, I don't feel very strongly about. Um, just do another quick search here to see if I can find it. So there are three, so that makes two. There, yeah, that's right. Three predictor variables, we've got two. So we got, so that's that. Yeah, this looks right. So the number here is 1750 and then, uh, your F value, we need this other number here, which is 1500 divided by 17. So 88, oh, that's why that's there. That's that's interesting. And then 1750 divided by 88.23 is, uh, is the F value. F is 1750 divided by 88.23. Let's see what that is. the 19.83 number gotcha. you've got to you've got to make this table to do it and you'll see so you, what could help you is if you go to a future problem on this you might see the table and see how the numbers work together to do that okay we'll do uh -huh. yeah Okay. Um, and then 19, just for degrees of freedom, isn't it? There's 136 minus five minus one, and that'll give you what you want. Um, that sounds right. Critical value. It's, yeah, it's N minus something. I guess because there's more than one independent variables, you got to do that and you got to subtract one more. Yes. That looks right to me. It's it the only like the none of the other ones are actually reasonable. So yeah, I mean it. I was gonna say if like one thirty one was there, it would be maybe between that. But yeah, that looks right. Okay, um, this is the same 
Okay. Okay. Then we have a formula for the multiple coefficient. You do. Now, there was an earlier problem, and I don't know if we found R or it wanted R or R squared when we did, because this, this is the R squared formula, SSR over SST. So look, there was an earlier problem, though. Um, could you, if, if, is this for a grade so that I can, um, whether you care if, or not? No, yeah, because I've already done it and got 100. I'm just really on this problem. Okay, okay. So there's one earlier where maybe we should have taken the square root of the number, but I didn't tell you to. But this one, let me snip in and show you, and I will remember to share my screen this time. Uh, okay. So the, the SST, there's the total, there's the regression, the error, and the total, okay? And, and the total is 1,200. The E is 384. These two numbers, this missing one, have to add up to this. So that's why this is 816. Like, you have to be able to find this because R squared is SS. Uh, could you go? What was it? SSR over SSE? I think it was SSR over SSE, like that. So it'd be 384. For the R squared. Yes. Could you just verify that this formula is right on that other page? It's um, SSR over SST instead of E. No, SST. I'm sorry. Okay. So that's 1200. Okay. So I have to find SSR, correct? Yes. Or yes. Well, no, well, S SSR was, sorry, <laughs> messing this up. SSR, SSE Stop was it. given, and then SSR you calculate because they add up to the total. I'm really messing this one up, but this is, this is 816 over 1200. Gotcha, okay. And those are critical here. You gotta, gotta know them really well. Yeah, I'm very glad she's giving us a formula sheet on the test. So it's just from six eight. Okay, earlier when I did this one, I'm trying to think of what I did. I if you, could you uh, could you share your screen, please? Yeah. Or well, well, I'm just talking about the same one, but um, uh, when I was doing, I mean, your way is simpler and easier too. Okay, so I just want to make sure that the way I was doing it earlier, just if I end up doing that on the test, it'll still work. Um, because the way the formula sheet sets us up, it's like I would do one minus SSE divided by SST, and then yeah, that also works. Okay, that's so, another way okay. to do it. Perfect. Okay, all good. There. Um, okay, yeah, this one 22. Okay. So the 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 answer space is what we're, is like. It, this is one of those like which of the following where you look at the answer space to to make a decision. So it's it's talking about males and females, and and notice that x two, if you're a male it's zero, but if you're a female it's one for x two. So the females add three, and males add zero to that. Does that make sense? Like, like that's that's it's called a binary. Um, yeah. I'm kind of confused. Okay, let me snip it in. Um, sorry about that. I I uh, will make I will make it clear here on my screen. So let me share. Okay, so so let's let's say like when you're looking at this equation right here, okay, if a person was um, 20 years old, but you didn't know you didn't know how old they were, or you didn't know whether they were male or female, okay, if they were 20 years old, their income would be 30 plus 0.7 times 20. Do you do you see that right there? Yeah. X1 is there. Is their income? So this is just because we, we we'd like some numbers. It's forty four, right? Right. But if if you're a if you're a male if you're a male so now we're going to for a male, it's 
44 plus three times zero. If you are a female, it is 44 plus three times one. And obviously there's a difference here. The males are gonna make 44 and the females are gonna make 47. So it's a difference in three and then you multiply it by the thousand. So that would give you- Yes. So males is three, or yeah. Okay, I see yeah. that. Do you have a female oh. instructor? What? Is this a female instructor? Yes. Okay. <laughs> there's a gender bias in here. You could tell her that. I I'll let her know. <laughs> love it. <laughs> All right. Um, but okay, so just to clarify my head. So the X one would just be technically just a random age you would throw in. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. I was I was just trying to get yeah, you to yeah, like ignore sure. that there's an X one. Yes. Okay. So yes. Just any age, um, no matter what, it'll end up being a three thousand dollar difference. So yeah, so whenever you have one of these binary variables, which means that they're they're either one or zero, the the one is the one that makes the difference. Um, you know, it could be positive or negative depending on if it's at like plus three or minus three. But um, gotcha. okay, that's I think you got simple. it. Yeah, that's simple. So whenever whenever you're ready, go ahead and share your screen again, please. Here we go. Um, we'll do this one too, 23. Okay, so as X increases by one, what is the coefficient in front of X? Is it positive or negative? Negative, oh, so it just decreases by six. Yes, exactly. Easy. Um, so is this pretty much what we just did? You're yes. just what they give you the actual- 24 for X1. And then X2 is zero because it's a male. Okay, and then would I just get, I'll just get a number, I assume. Yes, you do have to multiply it by a thousand, like, but you're gonna get, you got your calculator and you're gonna put in 30 plus 0.7 times 24 plus, well, since it's a male at zero, so that's it. And you get 46.8. And then you times it by a thousand. But yeah, it's 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 in thousands. Okay, that's simple. Okay, um, this is also where I get confused. What like what is B one and like B two and all that? Okay, so let's start with B. Actually, beta zero. Uh, I see like a Greek week thingy up there. Maybe you're uh, in the Greek world, but beta obviously Greek letters. Constant is beta zero. Um, mm -hmm. X1 is beta one, X2 is beta two. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. There's nothing, nothing oh. else going on um, for that. Now, to, um, to determine this, we actually need, and let me, let me actually grab this because uh, it's, it's too much to explain. I actually have to show you how to calculate the T values from this. Yeah. All right, so let me share my screen. So you, you, a normal output, it actually gives you this, your instructor is choosing not to. So the T value is the coefficient divided by the standard error. So it's literally 12.924 divided by 4.425. And that gives you a number, a T, a T value. Okay. And you do the same thing for each of these. So the next one is minus 7.682 divided by 2.63, 45.216. And, and there's a reason we're doing this. I know that I don't know these none of these have this, but um, um, well, this is weird. But but okay, the, is there a, what's the fourth option? Say, um, not be rejected. Okay. So for beta one, we care about this middle one here. Let me get that number. Minus 7.682 divided by 2.63. So that's minus 2.92. And so you reject, you reject if this, if this um, T value, a P, uh, this T value, it corresponds to an area on a, on a curve. Gotcha. So do I find the test statistic for it? 
You really need to find the area here. I can't remember if it's one or two tail for regression. It is two tail. So you actually have to double it, whatever it is. So just so I find uh, so let me, one multiply by two. It's it's not Z, but it's and you want to be really careful in this course because they the instructors sometimes really like you do a difference. Let me let me share the calculator and show you how to do it on there in case you want to do it that way. So we've been we've been spending a lot of time in this tests area. You actually want to go to distributions now, which is second distribution, and you want the T and you want the T uh, CDF. Oh, and mine doesn't give me that. Okay, um, so we're gonna go minus two point nine two. Yours, yours has it probably has a list of like things to enter. This is an older style calculator. Wait, wait, wait. Where did we go right now? Distribution, second distribution. distribution. So second vars. I don't think this is gonna work. All right. Uh, I don't remember what this wants. Okay. Let me. You, I can do it another way. That's not right. Because I remember I did this earlier, but I don't remember exactly what I did. Oh, it wants an upper and a lower. That's why. All right, I got. I got to look this up. Ti eighty three T distribution. Uh, where is it? Left, right, and then degrees of freedom. Okay, so so the only difference, all right, you, so let me go to this. So the, what I did wrong here is, is I have to put in, I have to put in the lower bound, which I'm gonna put in a negative 10, should be acceptable comma, upper bound, and then degrees of freedom is 15. So that should work, but then I got to double it. So see how when I double this number, you get more than 0.01. You're going to see that here shortly. You get 0.01055. Um, hold on. Um, is that last one 15 and they just take out? Yes, split? yes, yes. You got split up. Okay, so 0.0. Five can match multiply by two. Okay, yes. Gotcha. So what what like that's why I mentioned it be very careful because the T test is is the right one to use. If you use Z, it might give you something slightly different. So here your here your P value is greater than alpha. So you fail to reject. Okay. Um, and just to figure out where all those numbers came from, so the negative ten. Uh, so it's it the way way TCDF works is is you need the lower, and the upper. So the upper was minus two point nine two because that's the right bound. The, the lower, like they tell you to do, uh, minus ten e to the ninety nine kind of okay. thing and that's okay like do that if you want but um i don't yeah i know you don't have to go that far so i'm you kind of shortcutting it a little so if i like were to do this tomorrow i just put a negative 10 to that lower bound yeah gotcha. it's, it's got to be far enough away um and what is far enough i mean i don't know let me think of like how far away is 2.92 miles versus 10 miles 10 is pretty far away from 2.92 miles gotcha okay thanks sense and then the 15 came from 16 minus one correct because it isn't yes it's sample size minus 16 15. 16 yes exactly gotcha. okay and then i will i always have to multiply that number by two in a regression test yeah because the 
the null hypothesis is that beta one equals zero and it's a two tailed test. So if it was like the null and then it was like beta two, do am I still doing the same exact thing just with? Yes, 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 gotcha. yes, yes. And so for this one, we got 0.0156 is greater than 0.01. Okay. So then I failed to reject. Yes. So probably not be rejected is the right answer. Gotcha. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and share your screen. Um, we are uh, going eight, maybe 10 minutes here, but uh, just you know, prioritize what you want to work on if we're not able to get through everything. Maybe we are. Um, we went through all the math problems on there. So for the okay. most part, that's it. But I guess if that one I knew, um... there was one on causal, you know, X, whether X causes Y or Y causes X. And hopefully that's been made clear in class that correlation does not mean causation. Okay. Um, I guess. I don't remember. I think it was a little further down, but uh, the like, like this is like a huge keep going. It was right there, 14. Um, the variables never cause each other to happen. Okay, so there so may or may not, I mean, not never, not never, there may or may not be. It's like, it's like, well, maybe, but you can also find things that are correlated that definitely don't cause each other. Okay, so what X and Y, even if they have a gotcha, they're not okay. Yeah. That's a big point of emphasis in this course. That's why I'm mentioning it to you so you can get, get that question right. Um, I mean, I guess just understanding the concepts of like these definitions since, I mean, we have a little bit of time. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the regression model, the error terms are assumed to be zero, I believe. But that's not really a useful thing. Um, let's look at larger values of R squared. So larger values of R squared indicate that it's um, R squared is your coefficient of determination. That means like how much is predicted by the variables in question. So a higher value of R squared means you're doing a better job of of being able to predict it. So you would expect them to, to be uh, grouped much closer to the, the, uh, um, the line. Okay, so. That's not, it's a, this, is, this is a weird question because it should say, it should be asking you like how, what percentage of the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. And that's what larger values of R squared do. It means more of the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. But it, but it, it doesn't have anything to do with average value. It, 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 so a higher value of R, R squared also indicates that your R is closer to one or minus one. And that's why the, the, the points are much more closely grouped around that regression line. So is that? It's, it's the last one there, um, but it, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. A picture would help. Let me, let me, let me draw a picture. Let me just share my screen. You can, I don't need to fully uh, grab a snip here. Sorry, I, I it's, it's uh, so let's say R equals approximately one. That means that your points are basically on the line going up. If R is approximately negative one, that means they're on the line going down, but they're really they're really tight on there. Mm -hmm. And in both cases, R squared is is really close to one. So that's why they're they're tightly grouped around the, the least squares line. Okay, gotcha. That makes it a little bit easier. If you wanna, if you wanna share your screen again, we can uh, we can look at some questions. Um. Okay. This one, I remember doing it earlier, and it was the multi-column narrative, whatever that is. But I 
don't really know what that is. Or maybe it wasn't this question. I don't think that's right, but I, I don't want to disagree with you. But I, I'm not, not, I'm not no, sure. No, right. There was another question. So I, yeah, I did these earlier, so my brain is being jumbled. But yeah, uh, multicolinary is not covered in this class. It's covered in like Econ 410 or something. Um, that yeah, that see that because she had there was another question in that multi that was the answer for it. And I was like, I don't even remember her like speaking on that, but yeah. It's it's not part of this course. Multicollinearity is, uh, it's a real problem um, when variables are uncorrelated, or I'm sorry, multiple, uh, there's multiple correlations in the, in the model. It, it, it creates problems. It, it really is not, I don't know why I'd be here, but um, yeah, I believe that that the, the coefficient of determination tells you how good like your model is. Okay. Okay. The higher the coefficient of determination r squared, the better your model is. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thank you very much. That you're welcome. You. Best of luck on your exam. I'm sure you'll do great. And uh, let me know if I can help again. Gotcha. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye now.